Today I'm going to be breaking down the different roles that go into making a manhua. If you didn't know, Korean manhua is an extremely popular medium right now where the comics are colored, vertical scroll, and relatively short. They're only 40 to 60 panels. In manga or comic pages, that would be roughly 10 pages per quote unquote webtoon episode. So it's relatively short, but it's colored and it's serialized weekly. It's definitely hard business. So before we get into the video, I wanna introduce myself. I'm Brandon Chen. I'm an author of novels, manga, and webtoons. I write original stories for large publishers like Webtoon, Tapas, Voice Me, and others. And creating webtoons and comics has essentially become my full-time job. So because of my experience, I'm here to educate a little bit about the different roles that go into making a webtoon for those who are interested in making one one day, or if you're just curious. But before we get into the video, make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and comment what your favorite webtoon that you're reading right now is. I always need a good read, so let me know. And make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification to make sure that you stay updated on whenever I put out new content in terms of anime, manga, or webtoons. Now let's get into the video. Before we start naming roles, I want to technically say that one person could do all of this. They could make an entire webtoon serialized by themselves. It's just so much work that goes into a weekly serialization, especially when it's colored. That's why I usually have assistants. You know, on a lot of my series, I have a lot of assistants that are helping with different roles like coloring, inking, etc. And we'll talk about them in, the, in this video. But if you're a total machine, you could do this all on your own one person. But yeah, for my series God Game, I have roughly 10 plus people who are working on that series in terms of art, which is a lot of people. Um, for Just a Goblin, there's roughly three to four people that are working on that. So it really depends on the production um, and, the, and the artists that are involved as well and, their, and how much they're putting into the project. Anyway, before any art is even done, the writer is actually the first one to touch the project. They define what the story is about what's going to happen in every single episode, what goes into each panel, down to the very detail of what the perspective of the panel is looking like, what the dialogue is, what goes into the dialogue, what the sound effects and action effects are. All the minute details are defined by the writer. At least that's kind of how I, how I do my writing. <laughs> in my perspective for writing, the writer is very much like a director because they define what the art is going to look like before it's even done. And usually the way they do this is by writing a script, unless they're an artist. If they're an artist, then you'll usually just, maybe you'll just start with a storyboard. And that's actually the next role that we're gonna talk about. So first is writer, second is gonna be a storyboard artist. Usually a storyboard artist is gonna take the script that a writer created and create kind of a rough draft of what the entire episode is going to look like. And when I say rough draft, I mean like it's really rough. Like it can literally be stick figures. As long as you understand the composition and what things are gonna look like, it can be a storyboard, which is why sometimes writers in the manga space are doing storyboards as well. So that the publisher knows what the episode or chapter is going to look like before it even starts like the really tough and intricate art production. And it's super important to get the storyboard right because if an editor sees that you aren't doing something right in your in your chapter, they can catch it in the storyboard rather than when you finished an episode and everything's colored, everything's inked, you spent all week doing doing all this stuff, and then they say, redo this entire section. That would freaking suck. So that's why it's good to make sure that you get the storyboard right, and that's why it's the most important part, in my opinion, of the entire um, comic development process, because it really defines what the entire chapter is going to look like before anything actually gets done. So if I were you guys and you, you know, I was an aspiring webtoon author or manga author or any sort of comic author, I would put the most time into making sure that your storyboard, which is the skeleton of your project, make sure the storyboard is sick. <clears throat> the next phase is going to be inking. So you got writing, you got storyboard artists, and then you got your inking an inker. The inker is really the person who just takes the storyboard and creates more defined lines so that it's basically a black and white version, an uncolored version of the comic, right? It's, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty clean. The lines are really clean. It's looking beautiful. 
If the storyboard artist and the inker are the same person, sometimes the storyboard artist will literally just ink as they're storyboarding. Sometimes it's just easier for them to do that. Like, fine, cool. That's pretty crazy, in my opinion. Sounds like a lot of extra work, but whatever. Now, if they're different people, that's a new scenario where the storyboard artist is usually the one who's defining the artistic kind of vision. Well, actually you have to pick between one or the other. So it's either the storyboard artist de de depicts the art direction or the anchor depicts the art direction. Um, one person has to take the initiative here and kind of steer the art style. So it's either the star storyboard artist is gonna be doing really defined lines that are basically, that the anchor just has to like trace over or the storyboard artist is gonna be doing stick figures and then the anchor is gonna turn that into something that's really beautiful. Those are two scenarios that I can think of right now. It really just depends on your team and how that dynamic works out. But usually in my experience, the line artist slash inker is not the one who's defining the art style just because usually they're an assistant. So it's very rare that you would see that case. So usually the storyboard artist is the one who's dictating the entire um, art direction or style rather. Anyway, confusing bottom line is the line artist slash inker is the one who just makes the lines look very clean and it's beautiful and on color. Then we're gonna to toss the finished line art over to the colorist. And they do exactly what you think they would do, which is screens, tones, coloring, special effects. They're the ones who kind of bring the episode to life. And honestly, it's the most time consuming part of the entire webtoon kind of process, in my opinion. A lot of the reason that you see these massive series like Soul Leveling, Omniscient Reader, The Beginning After the End, and they just like have these crazy effects and they look so beautiful and it's crazy. It's because the coloring style is just absolutely freaking cracked. And it's, it's a ton of work. A lot of projects have multiple colorists because it's hard to meet a good, you know, weekly deadline when you have so much art that you have to color and make it, you have to make it very clean and very pretty. And having a lot of people work on one project when they're different artists and having them trying to synchronize styles, it's a hard thing for sure. So. I think coloring is one of the hardest parts of the entire kind of webtoon development process, actually. Which is why these projects like Soul Leveling, there's no way one person could do a coloring style and inking and all that stuff by themselves, right? You need an entire studio to make something like that. And then after the coloring's done, there's lettering. So in webtoons, typically the typesetting slash lettering is done by the lead artist. And that's usually the person who's doing the storyboards as we discussed earlier. But in Western publishing, like comic books like Marvel and DC, they actually have someone that is completely separate that specializes in, 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 in lettering. And they focus on all the dialogue bubbles, sound effects, action effects, all that jazz. So the way that we do things in webtoons is we'll just put placeholder text um, and sound effects and action effects in the storyboard phase. And then the sexy lettering that you see at the end, we'll just like put that in with our lead artist kind of being also the letterer. Because in webtoons, like you don't wanna bring on too many people because obviously there's an additional cost to pulling on an additional person into a serialization. So you might as well just have the lead artist kind of do that um, instead of hiring another letterer to come in just to, just to letter your project. But you know, then again, for some of my projects on Voice Me and some of the Western publishers that I've written for, um, they always just hire another person um, to do that lettering so that the other artists can focus on the next episode, the next chapter while they're also, while the letterer is doing their thing. So if you're wondering what my role is in all of this, I'm a writer. So I write all the scripts and story that goes into these episodes. A lot of people think that I just write the general story and the dialogue and sound effects and then I just throw it off to an artist. That's actually not the case. Every panel is defined with my vision in mind. So as I said earlier, I'm defining kind of what the panels are gonna look like, how the panels are laid out, what goes into the panels, what the dialogue is, sound effects, what the story is. I define like almost, the writer in my perspective for webtoons is very much a director. So a lot of kind of the creative vision um, is on me. And then I, you know, work with the artist to kind of make sure that it's executed. So I also review their panels. I review their art and I give feedback if something is not linking up or matching up. And obviously it's important to, you know, it, to, to be open to feedback. So if an artist comes to me and they're like, Brandon, I don't really like how you set the panel perspective um, for panel 34 on this episode. 
do you think I could do a little tweak and change it up in the storyboard? Cause I think this perspective is more dynamic. Um, and I'd be like, yeah, that's totally cool. Or I'd be like, no, I disagree. Let's talk about it. Um, so I think it's very, be, very important to be open to, to that type of feedback, but also like if I have a vision and I think that one point is, you know, one perspective is better, then obviously I'm gonna defend it and then we can kind of discuss from there. <clears throat> but yeah, I embody a very director style of writing rather than just kind of taking a script and throwing it to the wolves of the artists and, and seeing like how they, spit it out, you know, I'm very involved. Um, and it's a very collaborative process making a webtoon and we work together every step of the way. So I'm I'm a part of kind of the inking, the storyboards, the coloring I'm involved, the lettering, I'm involved in every aspect of it. Anyway, that's the many different roles of a webtoon slash manhwa uh, production. There's a lot of stuff that you gotta do and it's kind of crazy how much we have to do on a weekly basis. And I'm doing, I'm working on maybe like five to 10 different series at a time. Um, so, so it's a lot of work for sure. And then I have to market my work too. What the, f so much work. <laughs> anyway, if you like kind of more educational content like this, creating manga, creating webtoons, creating comics and novels, uh, make sure to drop a subscribe, drop the like, drop the comment. Let me know what you want to see more of in 2022 in terms of content. And I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.